So from today, uh, we're going to start look at specific design patterns. Okay, I spent a lot of time last time um, to give you some kind of overview and try to convince you that this is pretty important topic and very practical. And I really like this part of the topic because um, it's a, it's a really hands-on <clears throat> and not much serious. And also the, the pattern, every single pattern is so concise and you don't have to read too many things. It's not like you try to learn a new machine learning algorithm and then you find out some of the papers, try to understand all the formula and everything. Or if you don't read it, just apply, you don't know what's, what's going on. And this part, you know, we show you a design, we show you an approach, and then you can immediately start to use that in your applications and very practical. And also it's uh, language independent. It doesn't really matter what language you use as long as it's object oriented, you can always um, you know, uh, implement the same kind of pattern using like language you want. All right, again, I think the biggest benefit is that a lot of these things you can start to use it right away in all different kinds of um, uh, your project assignment or any other work you do right now or in the future. All right, so let's start with the very first pattern. All right, so before we talk about the first pattern, um, I want to also, you know, kind of recap for each pattern, you know, you need to kind of uh, pay attention to, obviously the name of the pattern very important because that's how we communicate with each other about um, specific design and pattern we're going to use. You need to know the intent. Why are we needing that? What's the motivation behind it? We need to know, um, you know, the applicability and some of those you can apply, some is not. You should also think about the uh, exactly how the solution works and also the consequences. And mostly we're talking about some of the, the concerns, the things that's not ideal. So you need to know uh, those trade-offs. Right, this is very important because, um, you know, even though the patterns are very powerful, but they only solve a specific problem doesn't mean that um, they will be perfect in other directions. Sometimes they may create some other problems. So you really need to know what is the problem trying to solve, what is the motivation, and then figure out if that's the right pattern or not. And I said that there are 23 patterns from the book, a classical book, and later on there are more patterns created by other people, but this 23 patterns are most classical. And there are three categories. We have patterns about how do we create objects, create classes. And then we'll pre primarily focus on singleton and abstract factory. And there are also patterns about the structures. You know, a lot of time you need to modify and update your structures. So we'll talk about the composite, we'll talk about facade adapter, um, decorator pattern. That's also one of my favorite pattern and also proxy pattern. On the behavioral side, and we also need to modify the strategies and the algorithm and everything. So the main uh, pattern we'll focus will be the editor, observer. Observer is my favorite pattern. Strategy, command, chain of responsibility. Now the things we will not cover, so we actually will leave you guys to kind of research a little bit and then bring us some examples. That's going to be uh, the main thing we'll do for the presentation part. All right. So we start with the creation though. All right, so this part of the pattern is more, mostly about how do we manage the process of instantiating things, primary objects, or when you try to create other kind of components, it's about creating things at runtime in your program, All right? And then, um, you know, these are just some of the definition. I, I, I really don't like all the series. It's don't, don't worry about the, all of this. Okay, let's just dive into the singleton pattern first. All right, so this is a very simple pattern. Uh, it's probably the simplest pattern across all the 23 patterns. Um, but I wanna talk about the first. Number one, it just gave you some clear idea, but also I want everyone to pay attention to this pattern because I actually give this pattern a different name. Okay, this is name uh, given by myself. All right, I call it an interview pattern. And just because a lot of the times I have seen students told me that uh, they were asked during the interviews, okay, this question, could you, do you know singular pattern? And what is singular pattern? Could you give me an example of a singular pattern? Or could you give me an example of how do you implement singular pattern? 
Okay. Um, even though everyone knows about design patterns, but I will tell you 99% of the time, they will probably only ask you about singleton pattern. Uh, the reason is because singleton pattern is very simple. So it's very appropriate to ask you that kind of question during the interview. But then if we, uh, for some other complicated patterns, it's, it's good to know those, but it's very difficult to, to talk and communicate and test during the interview. That's why this pattern has been asked by so many times. And I, have, I, I can tell you, most college students probably can't answer that. So if only if you know about design pattern, you can try this one. Uh, so I really want you to pay attention to this pattern because you will uh, probably have a chance of getting this question during the interview, all right? Okay, so that's called a singleton. So what is singleton pattern? Now, the intent is that we want to ensure a class has only one instance, and then we want to provide a global point of access to this only instance, and then the class itself is responsible for this only instance, for the sole instance. All right, so that's kind of a formal um, specification. So sounds like we will only have one instance. All right, so if this is the first time you heard about a singleton pattern, you probably got a little bit lost. What does that mean? All right, so I'll give you some examples. So where do we apply this? So sometimes you want exactly one instance of the class, only one object of a class. Think about in Java, you define a class. You can create a new object by calling something called a new, right? But then we want exactly one instance of a class. What does that mean? Right? Think about that. We'll, we'll look at some of the examples. All right. And then uh, it's maybe only you want something to be accessible to a client from one point. All right. So the client want to use something, but they only gave you uh, one point to use and to access. That's also a situation where you can apply this pattern. It allows a countable number of instances. Okay, so this is a little bit extension of the, the pattern. If you want, for example, you know, um, uh, you know, not just one, but you want a specific number to control that, then also this pattern can be applied. All right, so you want a global namespace provide a single object but does not prevent other objects from the class from being instantiated. All right, so um, that's kind of talking about the same thing. This is too formal, okay? Let, let me dive into some examples so that you know, why do we need this? What do you mean by just one instance? And why do we ever need to do that? In reality, when you build this kind of systems, there are some scenarios there that you will need this one very often. For example, uh, when you program database, Right. Um, some of you who are in the 4D project, probably you're connecting to your, your backend to the database systems. I know some of you use MongoDB, some of you use uh, MySQL. So these are typical databases you guys use. And then when you program those database, normally there's some kind of a database connection you can create from your backend. For example, in Java, right, libraries uh, that allows you to specify the, the endpoint of your database the login information, and then with that kind of object, you can then trigger some other database operation. You can read data, write data, all those. Okay, so this is a, a scenario where you need different kind of object to connect to the database. So the best practice of dealing with this is we want you to only use one object to do all these kind of connections. And just because the database is a very sensitive you know, location, it has all the data and we do not want um, multiple uh, access point exist. We do not want developer to have the freedom to create as many connections as they want so they can do anything they want. We want everything to be managed. Okay, there's only one object and there's only one way, one place to access the database. All right, so that's why we need to control the number of objects available to access the database. So that's one typical situation where you need one instance, one object only. A similar example would be if you're building something to manage the users. Again, user is also a very sensitive piece of data. And then you, you use that one to create a new user, set up a role, um, edit the user, delete the user. 
set up their groove, all of those. And obviously you cannot afford to have multiple places to be able to do that. Hopefully just one object, one point only. All right, so that's uh, you know, the ideal case. All right, another example uh, is this one. So think about in the phone, you program a mobile app. Um, whether it's Android or the iOS, you can, for example, use your camera. Uh, it's very easy to do. And most of this mobile, uh, mobile development framework allows you to create an object of the camera, and then you can take a picture, you can take a video, whatever you like. All right, so these are available to you from APIs, from objects. But the special thing about using the camera is that at one point, only one application can access it. Because if this camera is open, reading the data, then you can't really reuse that. You can't have another app that, you know, reuse the same camera and then receive the data. At least it doesn't, it's not safe or not reasonable to allow that. So that's why uh, the camera is a kind of a, critical resource if you learn uh, operating system. There are a lot of resources that's you know only available by one client each time. So we need to control who can use this one. So at this point, you must have only one instance of the object because I have multiple copies. If you have multiple copies, then different people with different clients can use that. All right, so these are some of the scenarios that so very often uh, you will need singleton and some other things include like a printer example. This is the same as Android, right? So each time only one job can be printed or you're doing like managing the, the windows, all right? So all of this, obviously there's only one place to deal with all the whole desktop management. You can't have multiple places. And then these are the same example in the, in the when you program something embedded software system, uh, you need to know that physically the component de device, what's available, when it's available. Most of these things only had one device available. So it doesn't make sense to create multiple object instances, All right? So I just want you to have some kind of a idea on in reality when you're building all the system, why do we need singleton and when do we need that? All right, so, but then this, again, this is a high level idea. All right, so let me think, let me just illustrate what we're trying to do and um, from a code example, all right. Let me go open my Java code here, all right? Again, eventually all this, um, all the design patterns, you need to be able to implement it. All right, with the code, even though we're talking about software design, and but to become a top coder, principal engineers, you, you need to be really good at coding. Okay, just knowing the design, and everything uh, is not enough. All right, so let's talk about single and pattern. So I'm going to use this uh, camera as an example. Okay, let's think about I have this thing called Android camera. Let's assume there is a class like this. Okay. The Android camera allows you to take a picture for sure and then do some other things. Okay, so I'm gonna call, make a method called void take picture. All right, so this one will take in a photo. Normally, it will also save the photo. Saving. Let's just assume that this is something you can do. And obviously you can do a lot of other things. You can do, you know, record a video. Maybe you got a, like a fall pass. All right. All right. So just a very simple use case to demo the, the scenario here. Okay. So now I have this Android camera, um, pretty easy to use. You got a tool. Uh, message to call. All right, so I mean my app, create another class. And this is my, for example, uh, I got my um, Facebook app. All right, now Facebook app has a lot of things to do, but part of it, you could um, use the picture, sorry, camera, take photo, and then Take a video and then upload it, save it, do whatever you like. 
Now, in this case, if I want to use that Android camera, very easy. Well, I can do Android camera. All right, and I will create an instance. So I got an object, everything is set. I run the constructor and then the camera, I can see, take a picture. All right, now I'm gonna run it. All right, so that one calls the method and then run all of this information. All right, so everything is very straightforward. So you got your camera class here and then you create object, then you can do it, all right? So my question here is, are we, uh, is this a situation where um, we are following this singleton pattern or are we, since remember what we were talking about, like for the camera, we do not want people to have multiple copies of, or multiple objects to use this. But right now it doesn't look like that. I gave you example, why not? Because if I have another one, and this is a, uh, um, you know, Snapchat. Snapchat also need a photo, so they also need to configure camera in the same way. All right, and then they can also do whatever you like. So if I run this one, this is coming from Snapchat, Snapchat. So there are two applications, two cons, and then they created two instances. All right, even though they named the same, but there are two copies, I can just make it like very clear. So this is camera one, and this is the camera two. It doesn't really matter, but just visually it looks better. All right, so I can create as many as you want. Now think about your phone, you got a lot of apps that need to use a camera and literally everyone can just do this one and can do it. Or even within the same application, uh, for some reason, I might want to do another one. So for example, for one camera, I did some configuration and then I want to do a different one and just, you know, for whatever purpose I want. Okay, so I can just go create another one and then use this one as well to take a picture. Because as a developer, okay, you really, you can do all of this if you want, because this is coming from Java. You know, this is a valid Java class. This is a, a key a statement that you can do to create an instantial new instance. So that, that's exactly what you can do. So that's why you just click make a new and get a copy and then you can call it, All right? So there's nothing that can prevent you from doing this. So the question we have for you is how can we change a program so that we do not want you to do this anymore? We, 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 you can do it one instance, but that's it. You can only have one camera one. You cannot do this anymore. You cannot do this one anymore. Or if you want to use camera, that's fine, but just use that one it says I already created, right? Which is right here. If you create one here, then next time still use this one or some other places also use the same one. Don't give me another instance because these are totally different instances, right? If I copy, if I print, for example, camera one, camera three, and then if I call, I run this one camera two, they should all be different like this camera two, if I run this. Okay, so that is the ID. So uh, 6FF, 5DF. And then if uh, I run this one here, all right. So they are all different. So we don't want you to use a different, all right. So how can we achieve that? Um, for those of you who know the singleton pattern, you probably know the answer. Even if you don't know it, think about, are there any way we can do 
to solve this problem. We do not want you to, to have uh, multiple instances here. Yeah, Robert, you're right. So that, that's what we want to do. So we want to just have one API to, to do it rather than create a copies. But then the problem I'm mainly talking about here is assume that this is the API. So, so Robert, you can consider this as your API, right? So this is my API, but um, um, you're supposed to just call this one with one instance. But since this one is Java class, I, I just, I can create another instance. There's nothing wrong with it. I pass the compiler. This is what Java allows me to do. And, you know, if I don't know the best practice, I, I would just go ahead and do that. There, there's nothing that can prevent me from doing that. So my question is, how can we somehow enable or guarantee a one instance scenario, scenario situation, even though the developer might not know some of the best practice about this. All right, so think a little bit about, uh, about it. It's, it's like a very smart special coding technique. All right, so let me see what I already said. Ryan said that, could you make an abstract class that access an object created within the abstract class? Yeah, I mean, you can definitely create an abstract class, right? Um, but abstract class, eventually you will still have a concrete class, right? So for example, you may create a, abstract camera and then this one extend abstract camera that's fine yes so android uh, the abstract camera you cannot really create instance but this one you can still create instance right it doesn't matter whether you have an abstract class or not uh, as long as you got one concrete class you could do this as many times as you want okay so i can do one more and what i don't want happen is i don't want you to do this okay even though is allowed. All right. So let me see what else said. All right. So so yeah. Again, if you never learned this one, think about this. Is there some coding that you can do to literally really prevent you from doing this? You can't do this anymore. Okay. I'll show you the answer shortly. And then some other mention. Let me see. Uh, wrap it in another class and define it as static inner class. Yeah, it's kind of close, okay, but then more specific, right? More specific, you know, something about a static, definitely is the right direction. I saw Jimmy also mentioned about static, you know, because when you have a static in the class, right? Normally, you don't really need a instance. Yeah, that's definitely the right direction. And then, um, why can't you use the same instance, Aaron? So yeah, so you can use the same instance. That's what we're trying to do. We want everyone to use the same instance. But the, the current class that we set up, you, you cannot prevent people from using the second, the third, the fourth one. So that's something we want to get rid of. Yeah, static, abstract class, not much to do with the abstract class. Yeah, yeah, private constructor, Nick mentioned about that one. You know, I don't know what else they're thinking about that. Uh, it's a very special technique, you know, think more about that. Okay, it's definitely, you know, the right direction. Okay, you the stat, uh, David mentioned you the static counter checked when the constructor is called and if you counter one and then don't create that instance. All right, so that is actually very good. Okay, so, you know, I'm gonna go through with David's uh, idea first that you guys probably have a better idea. So this case, you know, we're it's, it's something about, um, managing the number of instances you create. So one thing we can do is we should know, um, we, we need to know where, how many we have so far. And then in order to know that we need to record it. And obviously you can't, you don't want to record it in the client side because that's all across all different places. Now what we can, you can record is record it here because everyone is going to need it. And you all know that, okay, so we got, uh, you know, uh, a static view. If it's static, then that's good because it will not have, you know, anything about um, uh, object. You can it's all shared, so it's a, a very accurate way to do this one, right? So I'm going to have a count. All right, so that's following David's approach, and at least you know you can see where we're going. All right, so that's the, that's a counter, and then David mentioned that okay, so if you every time you create one, we're going to increase the counter. 
and then check it. So in order to do that, then you need to think about where do we create and check that one. So he said about constructor. A lot of you also did mention about constructor. That's obviously the right place to go. I didn't really write this constructor, but you know it's default one. So I'm gonna write this constructor right here. All right. So if you're not familiar with constructor, you must go back to Reveal Java. Okay. Constructor is the method that will be called in the, at the very first place when you whenever you create a new instance. All right. So this is, here is the constructor. And then let's just approve. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say here, creating a new constructor. So I'm going to go back here. I'll run this code again. All right, as you can see, there are three times we create objects and three times it's being executed in the constructor. So what we want to do now is to check the counter if the counter you know, is um, equal to zero. That's good because we don't have anything here and I can create a, create a count otherwise. And then we don't want you to do that, right? And then once you create it and then you will just increase it by one. So next time you know that this is only one, sorry, this there's already one that you can't do that. Yeah. Deconstructor, David, do we have a de deconstructor in Java? <laughs> yeah. Mm, don't worry. Yeah, we, we don't need to worry about the 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 other situation. All right. So, but okay. So this is the good. These, did you guys see their their the direction we're going? Okay. Every time you go there, we're checking the counter. But okay, if if this is a uh, okay zero, and then we do it, nothing happened, then just create it. But if it's already done once, then what what should we do now? Throw exception, right? So that's probably the only thing you can do, right? Throw new runtime exception. Okay, so only one instance is allowed. Okay. All right, so now I go back to here. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna run this code. All right, so the first one was created auto correctly, but then since then, and only one is allowed. And then when you are doing this one, it's wrong. You can't do this anymore. Okay. And then what you can do is you can do this. Okay. Let's use the same instance. Then that's fine. All right. So let me run this again. All right. So that one works. But basically, we're just using the same instance right here. All right. So that's kind of a one workaround we have to solve this problem. As you can see, the really nice thing about this one is knows how many you have. And then you can easily just say, oh, I, I just need one instance only. Or you can say, okay, I, you can do three instances at most. So that's a very good way to, to keep it. Um, and also it's very formal, right? So even though you are, you are writing code like this, but when you run your code, you will get a formal error, okay, from Java that is not allowed. And then you will see that in your program will be failed, right? So this is definitely getting us in the right direction, um, but you know this is not perfect solution. The reason I said it's not perfect just because you won't know this error until you run the code and then it's through the exception. All right, you, there is no way to tell you that at this point. You know, some of the developer they don't even know that they they just thought that I can create a, a camera and then they start running the code and then. If this is the thing that they tested in the first place, then that's fine. But um, if if uh, this code was never executed very often, and they don't, they might not even know there is this kind of a potential issue. And when that happens, that just costs people so much time, and extra time to figure it out, right? So well, this approach works, and this is not our our ideal solution. So our ideal solution is how can we let people know even earlier this is not okay you can't do that even before you run your code okay so how could we improve the things here to to do that yeah yeah so Rafi, you're definitely you know getting to the right direction okay um so Rafi. 
get a very good point here. Okay, so he suggested if you look at his uh, his chat here, we define a static pointer in the class, and then um, assign the instance to it, and then the 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 constructor is not zero, and then return the static pointer. So basically, he got this new idea. Uh, I think which is a great improvement. So he's saying that let's do this. Okay, we're gonna do a static pointer. Okay, we'll just use his term called pointer. And then the type of this pointer. So I think his idea is that we, we don't want you to kind of do this kind of thing because when you start to do new things here, it, it, just, it just makes a lot of errors. And then because you don't know if you can do that or not. Why don't we control you so that you only do a static you know, instance using a static field. So that means I can create a Android camera type within just my class, just like this, all right? This one. So because this is only one instance, and if we just tell everyone, just please use this one, and that's, that's going to be very safe, right? So for example, here, you know, with this approach, what I can do is I can say, all right, so Android camera dot pointer. All right. And that way you don't need to worry about creating things. You just you just use that one static so that you don't even need to do a new statement. And in fact, you can just do this right away. You don't you, you don't really need to do this camera one, two, three, right? You just do, do um, from here, okay, take a picture from here and then take record a video, all right? So if you compare this part of the code and this code, obviously the first one will be better because it's much cleaner. People will know I'm just gonna use the first, the only instance I have and then, and then just everybody follow the same way. That guarantees it's one instance. Right, so this is another level of improvement we, we have done. Okay, good, very good ideas, guys. Again, if you guys never know single pattern, this one shows you, uh, uh, like uh, shows me that you, you guys have pretty good understanding about object oriented features and stuff, All right. So if you wanna improve this one, uh, we could do things like here, I can just create a instance right here, All right? Or as some of you mentioned that uh, if this is zero, then the pointer will be, okay. No, no, you can't do this one here. You have to actually do it here because this will guarantee that you create one instance and that's it. And then this will only be executed once, all right? So that's it. So if you use this kind of static pointer, all right, so it's much better than, than, than following this approach of doing all the counter stuff. All right, so, um, but this is not obviously the ultimate solution because even though this part is perfect, I would say this is ideal case. That's what we want you to use, okay? One way, one access point, one instance, one place, one type of code. Okay, that's what we want. Great, perfect. But I can still do this, right guys? Yeah, I know you have this. Well, if I know it, I will use it, but uh, I don't know it, I will still create this one. And then it looks like it's still, it's still good. And obviously you can just throw me an exception always. You can say, oh, you know what? If you ever do this, don't do it. You can say, all right, please use Android camera dot uh, pointer instead. All right, I can do this. So if you if you change this one, then when I run the code, the first part all okay, but here, um, you know, it gave you this error. All right. Oh, but but this one also prevent the first time because first time you still have to run it. So sorry, I need I need to actually go back to the code. So for the first counter here, we we'll, we'll actually still need this. Okay. And then if you do this one again, then we'll say that please use this one here, All right? So let's go back here and run it. All right, so the first object taking a photo, taking a video, all fine, 
But when it comes to here, if you try to create it one more time, and they're gonna tell you, okay, please use this one. Okay, that's not gonna work. All right. But but you know, again, that, that suit doesn't solve my problem completely. That you know, you can still go here to uh, try this at least, and then you won't be able to find the error until you run the program. All right. And finally, I want to come back to Nick's solution here. All right. Uh, Nick, I don't know if you know the singular better pattern before. Okay. If you don't know, this is very impressive. All right. So the ultimate solution, guys, for this one is we need to make one more change. All right. This change is very smart. Okay. If you're not never saw about it and and uh, you probably probably don't know it, but then if you've seen it, you will know it is making so much sense. So the ultimate solution, guys, based on all of this we got, okay, um, you need to make one more change right here. Since we know that the constructor is always called first, um, but one way to prevent the calling it is I can mark this one as the private. All right, think about what's gonna happen if I do this. You write a private con constructor. Okay, so this one, we I, I bet you never learned this one in Java class. Nobody gonna show you this kind of special case. All right, so basically if you mark your constructor as a private, okay, think about the method. Okay, it's a private, you cannot call it outside, then what's gonna happen? All right, I'm gonna save my code, guys. All right, so watch my editor carefully. So I'm gonna save my code right now. The moment I save it. All right, so errors happens. Errors, errors. All right, why? Because here, when you try to do the new statement, you are trying to call that constructor. That's basically what the new, new statement is. It's actually just calling that constructor. But now the constructor is private. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that here, anywhere. You can't do that. And the same thing here. So this is why I call this one as the ultimate solution to solve this problem because you don't even need to run your code. And then as a developer, the moment you read this one, you realize that this is not allowed, all right? Because you, um, yeah, 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 the red, yeah. So, so people don't like to see the red. And, and then you, you have to follow the right approach. And then this approach is so smart that it doesn't affect this one. The reason is because um, we are calling this one inside this class. And then you can call the private construct inside the class. So that way you can still, you know, you, this 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 part of the code still works because you can still get that one instance. All right, so I'm gonna comment on this. All right, this part of the code still works. All right, no problem because even though this is a private, but I am creating my instance inside my class, so this private is fine. Yeah. So that's why this is a very smart way of dealing with this situation. All right, and then in the other class, all you need to do is Android camera dot pointer dot take picture. And this one works as well. Right. So fundamentally, we um, ask the developer to follow this approach and then there won't be any kind of exception. So, so far we're kind of get, get up to this point of uh, uh, putting this singleton pattern into your class. Now, hopefully you got some idea right now. So when we're talking about a pattern, we're not really talking about adding any kind of functionals. Okay, this one's is already there. Pattern help us to design the things in a better way. Help us to solve certain problems um, from structural, from creational, from behavioral point of view, all right? And, and it just makes your code and structure much better and more optimized. Right. 
So Ryan had a question, can you do that? Yes, you can definitely do that. So that, that's totally fine. For example, here. All right, so if you still wanna use your own name, that's fine. You just do this, Android camera dot pointer. That works. Because this one just reference, and you give this reference to this reference, this one means the same thing as like this one. So, so everything still works. So not a problem. We're not doing any kind of instantiation. All right. So finally, let, let me come back here to clean up a little bit about the code. All right. So first of all, as you can see, if we're not caring about the counter, right? Um, we, we don't have to use the integer. Uh, most of the time you don't, you only need one instance. All right, so a better way, some of you mentioned, you know, maybe the Boolean is better. So we'll call this one as is uh, instantiated. All right, initial is false. So if you haven't done that yet, right? So we're gonna allow you to do that. And after that, I'm gonna make this one true. So this one just from the readable point of view is better, is better, right? So, because we're just trying to see if you have done that or not. All right. And then also uh, a couple other things. One is, um, This one here, all right, guys. Um, right now, I put this pointer into um, uh, into the uh, uh, as a static field, and I'm actually creating this one here automatically uh, in, in line. So this line of code, do you guys know when this when this part will be executed? This one. When will Java execute this part of the code? For constructor, you are very clear because you, whenever you create a new object, it will run the constructor first. Whenever you have a new statement, it will do this one. But what about here? Compile. And then when you compile things, you never run things, Jimmy. You, you don't run anything in, in the compilation. All right. So all the static fields, static statement, just like this, it goes before your constructor, okay? It will be executed whenever the class is loaded into the memory during the execution. So what does that mean? For example, your class, you have some like import statement, right? So let's say that you import, you know, long uh, Java dot long dot, you know, list, uh, array list, sorry, utility. Array list, right? When Java starts to write your code, this code here, it, it found that, oh, I need to import this one. I need to load this into the memory so that I can start to use that one. The moment that you load this into the memory, all the static things will be executed because this one has nothing to do with your object. So they don't need to wait on your object uh, constructor to do it. So that's why this static stuff will be executed really early, like this line. The moment this one goes to the memory, loaded into JVM, it will be executed. So if you know that one, and you know, putting this line of code here, I will call, I, I don't think it's very good, does anyone see why it's not good? Why do I say that, you know, getting your instantiation in line here um, in a static field as, uh, you know, class loading time execution isn't good? Yeah, it initialized before runtime. So what, what's the problem, right? Exactly, right? Written was uh, hit the points. Yeah, so you load the, uh, the the class then, but it doesn't mean that you will need it. It's just like here, this example I showed you. I import this one, java.utility.arraylist, but I don't even use this one here in my class. It's still loaded, it's still executed. And same thing here, 
if you just don't even need a camera, but somehow this one was loaded, then you have to run this one anyway. And in this case, you see this is a very simple process, right? This class is very simple, naive, but let's say this, this one is like a database connection. That's gonna take seconds, a few seconds to be instantiated. And then just for no reason, your application startup time will be um, extended for extra few seconds. That's not what we want to see. All right, so you don't want to do it right here. So what, how do we improve that? So if we don't put it here, where do we put it? Main method. You can't do a main method, Jamie. It's it's a private constructor. You can't. It's, you have to be in this class. Separate method, right? What do you, more specific? I think you guys saw the point, okay? You you can't put this one um, here and associate with this pointer, and um, you if because if if this is the case, then you you probably have to, you know, um, the the problem you know in in order to solve this problem, it's not just about how to put this code here; it's more about how to use this one. And I will follow some of the idea you guys mentioned about another method, okay? Another method to use this thing, another method to access this thing, that's better. In other words, this is a very similar to the getter method. All right, so this is what I will do, guys. I'm gonna create another one, a static method, okay? I'm gonna call this one as get instance. So this one is gonna return me this instance, which is the only instance we have. Okay, and then this obviously do a static because I can only do a static field from a static method. So if I change it into this way, you can see the things get better because if you do this one here, then I can just simply move the stuff here to say, oh, I can just create an instance here. All right, very simple improvement, but it's a big jump in terms of performance because now this line of code will never be executed until you call it. Where this part of the code will be executed anyway when you load the class. All right, so this is called lazy instantiation. All right. This is all we prefer. So that's why in general you don't we don't want you to do a lot of uh, instantiation here. When you do things in line, it will be always executed in the first place. And sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it's it, it matters. So you should try to delay it whenever you need it, especially for things like this when when that you know causes a performance issue. All right, but here are some of you already saw the way I write it, this one here is wrong because if you do this, every time when you call this method, it actually creates a new instance. Yeah, exactly, so that's wrong. So that's why we need to bring this kind of a logic over. Okay, so let's keep improving this. I can just do if this one has not been instantiated and then I will instantiate it. And meanwhile, I'm gonna mark this one to be true. Otherwise, I can just directly return a point. With this, some of you already saw, I can just get rid of this part here. It doesn't need it. However, I still need to mark this one as a private because that way I can prevent people from calling uh, the new, new statement. All right. Please follow me, okay? So see how we get from one point to another one. 
why are we doing that? There involves so many programming design little ideas that, that help you to improve your program. Our program was already working. I just want to show you how do you get the most optimized solution. Now, as, uh, as um, Robert mentioned, you actually really don't need this one anymore. I don't know if you saw that. Now we use a flag to keep it. Is that really necessary? Okay. What can you do to 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 do the same thing without using this flag? Okay. You really don't need that. So because you can always check if this pointer is now, and that means it hasn't been done yet. All right, so I'm getting the code cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Okay. We don't even need a flag. We don't even need a counter because we just care about this instance. If this instance is now, then um, that means you haven't done that. That's just created and return it. All right. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's very neat. So with that, well, we got to make sure that people are not calling this one. They should, they should actually use something called a get instance and then take a picture. But now you see another problem. Well, uh, this guy is a professional. He knows to use this one. This guy is a junior. He, he still use this one. How do we solve that problem? Since we got a getter method, People should always start using getter. Don't use this pointer. Private, yes. That's why private is so important, guys. This, this keyword is very, very powerful in Java, okay? You have to mark this one at private static. This one remain public stack. That, that, that's how you force everyone to use one thing. All right, you force all the clients to use one thing. All right, now go back here, guys. This is the ultimate version of singleton pattern. I spent so much time to get you from point A to point B, um, but uh, they, I, I hope everyone was following and understand the, the decisions why we're doing all of this. To summarize, to apply singleton pattern, First of all, you need to mark the constructor to be private. So that's how you can guarantee that developer cannot do the new statement. Okay, that's the first step. But once you do this, um, yourself cannot create any new instances, all right? You cannot even do even one instance. How can we solve the problem? We apply a static field inside the class to store that one copy and the only copy. This one should be private because we don't want people to directly call this one, access this one. So you need a getter. The getter has to be public static because you are accessing a, pub, a, a static field. Inside the getter, you just need to control how you instantiate that instance. Remember, you only do it once. So if this is now, you do it. Otherwise, we don't do it. We just return you the previous copy. All right, so really three things to implement a singleton pattern. Private constructor, private static field pointer, and a public static getter. So given any kind of a class, you should be able to do things like this exactly the same way to turn this class into a singleton class. All right, I know some of you did mention about colon has the singleton. I know a lot of the new languages, they got the singleton really easy. You, you apply a keyword and become a singleton. Uh, this is all very cool. Um, however, this one here, we're trying to show you how you can uh, implement a singleton pattern and what's happening really under the hood. All right. Now, by seeing this one, you probably will understand why people are uh, asking you this question during the interview, because this is a, such a smart design and coding skill, but it's just so simple that if you know it, you really know how to explain it. You can easily turn a class into a singleton within 30 seconds. It really shows you a lot, okay? It shows you a lot about uh, how you understand object oriented. And you can see there's so many features involved about Java. If you don't familiar, are not familiar with static, you're not familiar with the private, some of this pointer stuff, and you can't really understand this. 
So that's why I feel this is such a perfect interview question. That's why our student actually told me that they're gonna ask this one uh, pretty uh, um, frequently. All right. So any questions so far about the singular pattern? All right, so in general, okay, uh, the singleton pattern discussion kind of can end here, okay? This was already a good, a very cool solution. Um, but you know, we're doing all we're trying to do something special, okay? So I wanna give you guys some more stuff, a little bit more advanced stuff. You might not need this one for most of the cases, but at one point uh, you will. Uh, remember, all we remember I told you, okay? If one day you wanna call yourself as a uh, master of Java. Okay, you want to call yourself as a senior Java developer. Okay, ask yourself one thing. Okay, are you familiar with something called a concurrency programming? Have you used Java thread? Have you programmed something about synchronization and resource? Okay, I'm, I'm talking about programming something practical, not just uh, use a thread, some of the random interface, okay? Until you get enough experience here, don't call yourself a master of Java or senior Java developer, okay? Because this is where it really shows your experience and everything, because it's very difficult. Now, this singleton pattern works for most of the case. However, it will have some issues when they go to the concurrency programming. Now, I'm trying to, um, give you this kind of situation. Let's see if we can, you know, make it happen, okay? But this um, uh, concurrency program and the difficult part is it's unpredictable. So sometimes you cannot really, uh, uh, you know, uh, program and run it in the way you want. There's a lot of uncertainty. That's why it's actually challenging. So what I'm trying to show you is, I wanna show you a, a concurrent situation of using a single instance. So for example, I'm gonna give you uh, you know, a uh, demo um, example, all right. So I'll create an instance here. All right, so what I'm trying to show you is what happened if two threads are using the singleton class at the same time and what's gonna happen, okay? Multiple threads used the same instant, um, uh, same singleton. All right, what happens? And then in order to do that, we need to create a multiple thread to run this one, right? So I, I, I don't know how many of you guys know how to do the thread or different approach. Um, you could um, you could do a thread, I'll call thread one. Uh, you can create a new thread just like this. And the thread you can start, you can run something or let's do this. Uh, you can, uh, you, you have to kind of pass a runnable. I think that's how you do it. Yeah, you put the code you want to run in that thread. That's a very simple way to create a thread. Okay, you think you want to execute something and then you can do it here. So I'm going to do something called Android camera dot get instance. I'm applying our singleton pattern. I'll take a picture. All right, that's one thread. Now I'm creating the second thread. All right, does the same thing. Now, since I have a singleton, I don't I don't worry about it because every time there's only one instance can be applied, can be used. All right, so right now this code is now executed until you start a thread. Okay, so this is only you defining what the thread is, but you're not restarting it. And then to start it, what I would need to do is to do t1.start, t2.start. Now, for those of you who know about thread, even though this line goes before this one, it doesn't really mean this one will start right bef before this one, right? So there's no guarantee. And most likely this will start first, but there's no guarantee. It all sent to the thread pool and then the JVM will handle how to execute it. But in, in theory, this one can be executed in parallel, especially when you have multiple cores in the system, in your hardware, you should have like physically have uh, like a parallel compute computation uh, behavior. So that's really good because they improve the performance. All right, so when we're doing this one, you know, can you guys think about what's gonna happen? Is there some issues with our singleton pattern implementation? All right, 
because basically you, you should think about both instance right now, both threads are trying to run this one at the same time. Would it be a situation where they both start exactly the same time and then they check the pointer and then they find out, oh, this is null. I see it's a null, you also see it's a null and then let's both start to create instance, get here. And the result is we call this one twice. And after that, that's fine. Whoever finished later is going to update this pointer because this is shared. This is shared by, by multiple threads. But the first time, there is this very minor chance that we call this twice. Can you guys see that? Again, we're talking about two threads are running this in parallel at the same time, line by line. They both go to here, it's now, they both see it's now, and then they both run this one. So I can't guarantee this one happened, but I saw this happen. So I'm gonna print a message here. I would call it to say that, you know, constructor call. So depending on how many times this is called, then you can see how many times this is being instantiated. Okay, so let's try and see if we get any luck. So I'm gonna go here. All right, so I'll right click here to run add in Java application. Yeah, so that's what I wanna show you guys. Now take a look at the code. This one is called, this one is also called. All right. So for, for when you deal with a concurrency program, don't, don't really think why that could happen or how that could happen or how the things, uh, why, why it works this way. Um, it, a lot of things are managed by JVM, okay? So for Java, they don't want you to think too much about how that's been done. You should trust JVM on their parallel computing capability. But as a Java developer, you need to be aware of these potential issues and then just program in a way that you can prevent that from happening, okay? So I don't know how many of you guys experience on, on to solving this problem, okay? When this one happens, it is, it is basically a time that you need to apply some kind of synchronization. You need to apply some kind of a lock. All right, so the easiest way to solve this problem, as you know, this method cannot be called in parallel. It must go uh, one person at a time. Because if both are running this one, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, this is the same thing. And then there it is now, they did a true. It had to be one person get to here before another. You can't let two people to do the same time. Just like the bank deposit, right? If you deposit something, think about that scenario, a very classic example. You got a con, you got a $200 and you and your wife are both depositing 100 and you're doing that at the same time. You both see it's 200, then you put 100, you put 100, but it turned out that to be, the result to be 300 rather than 400, that's wrong, okay? Now what should happen is you do one do that after another. That way you, you update to be 300 and then this one you update it to be uh, 400. So same thing here, you must guarantee that one is calling uh, another like uh, 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 afterwards. All right, so there are multiple ways to do it. A very simple way is you do some keyword called synchronized. All right, so how many of you have done this one? You can mark this master app is, uh, to be synchronized. All right, and then uh, this point, it should solve the problem because you're basically telling people that this method cannot be called at the same time. So I'm gonna run this code. All right, see the result guys? Constructor called, take a picture, save the photo, and then take a picture, save the photo. You only call this once. Why? Because you mark this method to be synchronized that uh, only one thread can access and call at the same time. If the second one is trying to call it, you got to wait. Okay, Java doesn't allow you to do that. You must wait there until I'm done with my uh, usage. All the lines will be finished. 
That's how the synchronizer works. So this one solved the problem. But get, do you see the, 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 the downside of this approach? Can you see something to improve? All right, this one locks the whole thing. It's fine, it's very safe. It solved that, that um, you know, actual calling issues. But then do you feel that this is not good to some extent? It will slow things down. What would, would be specific? How, how, why it slows things down? Constructor is still, no, constructor is not called a bunch of time, David. Once uh, at the first time this one is instantiated, then this one will not be called anymore. Yeah. It definitely slows things down, right? Why? Because yeah, every time when you call this method, you guys have to wait, all right? Think about there are like thousands of application trying to, to accept the same database. And every time only one can kind of access it, the rest will all be queued there and then wait until one is done. However, this is a getter method, guys. Most of the time you're just doing something really simple, just return a pointer. There's no point at all to have people to wait on this pointer. You're just reading the data. Why don't you allow people to read at the same time? Okay, so we're adding this one. It's the menu to solve this problem because this part cannot be executed at the same time. But the problem here is you put this keyword and it locks too much stuff. And you're locking this whole method and that's what we don't wanna see you should only lock and control and manage the part that's gonna cause the issue, which is this part. Okay, so hopefully from this example, you can see the concurrency programming is not really as easy as you thought. You might think in general, you might say, oh, this solved the problem perfectly. Right? It turns out when you are running this locally, it's perfect again. Right? When you push your thing to Amazon, when millions of users come here, suddenly the site is down. All right, so that's why I told you, this is really serious, very difficult because you can't foresee, you can't test that kind of a challenging situation in the tech, that development environment. All right, so the better solution is not to do this one. I don't know how many of you know how to, how do you lock certain lines of code inside a method? So you can still use something called a synchronized and then you put some kind of an object. The object can be anything, it can be a lock. So one way you can do is use the static stuff, do something like this, all right? So you can, anything in this block will be considered as like a same thing as I showed you earlier. So, so let, let's see here in this method in this way, everyone can call this and then get into this method right away. However, when they see this line here synchronized, then they have to wait. Only one, um, only one uh, uh, client can 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 access this block uh, each time. So this way of allows you to um, to lock certain lines of code without locking the whole thing. All right. So just know the idea. You don't you don't have to know all this concurrency right now. But I'm showing sure you the idea. So. If you know this, can you think about how can you improve the code? For example, right now, if I lock it here, it's still not perfect because even though everyone can call this one, can start it, but in the first line is still the lock and just lock it right here. It doesn't matter whether it's now or not, but everyone has to wait here to, to be checked and then return, right? So my question is, if you understand this one, yeah. Where do we put it? So a lot of you can see that let's put it inside because here is really the part that you need to lock it, right? Okay. All right. Because everyone can feel free to, to call this method and then to check this one. Of course, especially when this one is already instantiated, you don't have to wait. Everyone can just check it and return, check, return. So there's nothing should be blocked. But when you see 
this one is null, then you gotta be careful. All right, you have to wait on here and then we need to process this carefully. But I want you to think a little bit more about this one, even though this block here placed inside is optimized because it doesn't block most of the operations, but is, is this one here correct? Yeah, why not? Exactly. So even though this is more uh, optimized, but you know, it's still possible multiple threads get into this line at the same time. And then one of them grab the log and do this one. Then the other one will get into here, create another instance then. So you still cannot prevent it from being created multiple times. So how do we solve this problem? All right, if you understand this one, tell me how do we solve it twice. Wow, David, you, you're, you're pretty impressive, okay? They, all right, so this concludes my singleton um, discussion today. The ultimate, okay, this is the ultimate solution. If you can check it one more time inside, then you don't need to worry about anything. All right, everyone take a look at this. You don't need more logs, guys. No more logs, just one is fine. Because this is the situation you wanna be careful. Now, everybody stuck here. One of them grab a log, get into this is null, and the one of them, the first one will create an instance. After that, okay, the other guys get into here. So we check it again. And that time, this pointer is already being instantiated. So you don't have to um, do this way anymore. So you, you skip it and then you're done. It will not create this one more time, All right? So this is called double logged uh, mechanism. Something like this, okay, Google this name. Uh, so this is a very common strategy you use in a concurrency programming, all right? But I have to tell you guys, this is like something really basic and simple, um, but it's a lot of fun, okay? But at the same time, you can see concurrency programming is actually very challenging. Uh, it involves so much techniques and told so many techniques and then um, the double check a lot. Yeah, exactly. So that's correct. Yeah, it involves so many best practices. You should, uh, um, uh, you know, you, you need to gain those experiences. As I mentioned, there's a good book about this, uh, Java Concurrency, this one. All right, so this book, I read it, okay? So this book, I have to say, probably is the most difficult program book I've ever wrote. It, it, it's really interesting that you don't feel it's difficult, you can still understand it. It, it just the uh, examples and everything, you, you got to read it back and forth again and again. Okay, it's it's really in challenging, but I guess that's how you can really fundamentally improve a lot of your Java stuff. This one have, has no basic stuff. It dive into uh, concurrency, only a boss thread. Okay, so if you are really curious about this part, get this book and then start to read it. It's, uh, it's a lot of a learning here. All right, so this is not like a typical program book where most of the stuff you can scan it really quickly. You don't feel any challenge at all. This one is, um, yeah, uh, quite, uh, quite a challenge. All right, so anyway, guys, so I wanna, uh, you know, summarize this part here. You don't have to write it every time. Most time if your application not uh, in a uh, multi-thread, you don't have to do this one because just, this one just added all this unnecessary checking, okay? Um, but keep that in mind that in reality, you might have this kind of situation. But most of the time you need to know, you know, three things, private constructor, private static field, and then pri uh, public static getter. Inside you check the null and then create instance so that you only create instance once, all right? Okay, so um, uh, I think that's all I want to share about today, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, let me know.